Good morning. Welcome to St. Bernard of Clairvaux Catholic Community. Today we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's Mass is offered for Juan Manuel Zuniga. Please be sure your cell phone is turned off or in silent mode. Now let us ask the Lord to open our hearts and minds for the celebration of Mass as we offer a few moments of silent prayer. Please stand. The processional hymn is hymn number 225 in the Ivory Hymnal, hymn number 225. In the name of the Father, and then of the Son, and then of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We, I offer this Mass for Juan Manuel Zuniga, and also we pray especially for our pastor, Father Gaston, who turns 41 yesterday, so we pray for his needs and his intentions. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessing Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Gaston is here in confessions, if you want. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our heart the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may marry to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, 
Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. The word of the Lord. and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the afflicted man called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Refuge in him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which we were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you, along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiven one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma.
I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is flesh for the life of the world the Gospel of the Lord. Thank you. A characteristic of Jesus Christ and uh, of all the faithful followers of Jesus Christ is clarity, to be clear, clarity when in our thoughts and in our words, in our actions. When we listen to the Gospels, we are left with no doubt. Everything is clear without contradictions. For example, in today's gospel, Jesus Christ corrects them of the murmuring. He said, stop murmuring, so clear. And also say a great truth. He said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats, for of this bread will live forever. In other words, he was confirming to them that he was the Messiah they were waiting for. He was very clear because he said, I am. And this words was very strong for them because it is the same words which, with which God revealed himself in the Old Testament. He said in the Old Testament, I am who I am. Then in this gospel, when he say, I am, he say, I am God. But in our days is different. We live in a world that is relativistic. And what is this? Relativism is the way of thinking that sustain that each person has his own truth. Each one reaches things 
with his own personal vision based, based on his taste, his education, or his interest, interest. And that is why absolute truth are not accepted for these people. And look at this example, COVID and abortion. Let's see. To accept abortion, many people said, is my body, is my choice, is my decision. I can do whatever I want with my body. And now it turned out that COVID arrives. And if we keep the same statement, I could say that I am free and I can make the decision to get sick because it's my body. It's my body. So I can get sick. I do, want, I do what I want. But now they say, no. No, you can't. If you don't take care of yourself, you are a danger to society. You are irresponsible. If you want to meet with other people, no, come on, irresponsible, take care. If I want to go to visit a sick people, no, Father, many people depend on you. <laughs> the same with abortion, many people depend on this baby. Maybe this baby will be a doctor, police. And the same happened with the gender choice. Everyone can choose, but no one can choose to get sick with COVID, or no one can choose to travel without mask because of relativism. Everyone has his opinion, depends on his interest, his education. This is relativism. And don't worry, we don't mean that the rules of COVID for COVID should not be respected, no. What we mean is that one must have serious and profound criteria that are based on Christian morals and philosophy. We need criteria to take decisions, to educate our children. Homosexuality, abortion, and COVID, for sure, are danger to society. All three are risk for the future of society, but COVID is not a sin. But abortion and homosexu homosexual acts are a sin, so it's so different. No? That is why we, the children of God, must be characterized by having clear, firm, and current ideas with the law of God. And that is why we must form ourselves by studying, reading, in concrete. In our families, we must be clear and profound when educating. For example, not to contradict each other between the parents in front of their children. One parent give a penance for something that a child did wrong, and the other one takes away the penance. When a rule is given for the house, explain why. When you go to the mass, why, mom? Because I say, we need go. No, we need form. Look, the mass is very important for that, 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 that. That is why we need form ourselves, and we need to be ready to explain to our children. The decision that are made should be with reasons and not just for convenience or taste. 
These things are small details that if we do not work on them, we will end up having relativistic young people and families who think the abortion is the same as COVID, the evil is the same that good. That is why we need to form ourselves with good education, good, uh, good studying, readings. Then, dear parishioners, let us ask Our Lady to help us to be profound in our education, to be clear like Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true to God, true to God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered this and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we now make our prayer for our community and for the world, let us all pray to Christ the Lord not only for ourselves and our own needs, but for the entire people. For Pope Francis, Bishop Edward, Bishop Gregory, all clergy and religious, as they bring nourishment to the hungry, hope to the discouraged, and strength to those in despair, we pray to the Lord. For hear our prayers. For our nation, for renewal of the culture of life, affirmation of the sanctity of marriage, and preservation of religious freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who are in the darkness of doubt and unbelief, may their eyes be opened by the light of Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our St. Bernard students returning to school this week, that the Lord will open their hearts and minds to learn the truth, that he will keep them safe as they go about their day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of us gathered here, for the grace to remain firm in faith, unwavering in hope, and steadfast in love. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died, that the Lord may cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Incline your merciful ear to our prayers. We ask, O Lord, and listen in kindness to the supplication of those who call on you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory hymn is hymn number 342, and I will be hymn number 342. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church has spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you through all the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and the unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take away the sin. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For those who are not able to receive Holy Communion, you are encouraged to pray in your pews, yearning for a prompt union with the Lord and with the community. For those who are able to receive, please remember to consume the body of Christ in front of the minister. The communion hymn is hymn number 302, 302, in the piety hymn. We offer ourselves to Our Lady, and we ask her help in the education of our children, in our formation. And we say to her, remember the most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fly to thy protection, implored thy help, or saw thy intercession, was left undamed. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word Incarnate. Despite not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacraments that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of, the tr of your truth, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for a few announcements. An important reminder, beginning next weekend, August 14th and 15th, we in the Diocese of Dallas will return to the obligation to attend Mass in person on Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation. 
The televised mass will still be available for the sick and homebound. To see the complete decree from Bishop Burns, visit cathdal.org. That's C-H-T-H-D-A-L dot O-R-G. This Sunday, today at 4 p.m., uh, come and celebrate Father Gaston's 41st birthday. Bring food for your family and join the festivities in the back parking lot of the church. August 20th is the feast of our beloved patron, St. Bernard of Clairvaux. We will begin a novena of masses this Wednesday, August 11th, with a different intention for each day. Weekday masses will be bilingual at 6 p.m. Please check the bulletin for information. Proceeds from our annual garage sale provide the seed money to fund our fall carnival. We are happy to announce that the tally from this year's garage sale totaled $11,931.06. A special thank you goes to our coordinators, Reina Garcia and Josie Mendoza, who said once again, we thank our St. Bernard's community for their selflessness, for their selfless and charitable donations and for giving their time to make yet another year successful. Thanks be to God for all our volunteers and for our beautiful parish community. Okay, for the novena, like Rick said, we will have different intention for each day and different activities for each day. So you can come and see and participate in, in the novena of our beloved patrons and Bernard. And I wish you have a beautiful Sunday. And now I give you the blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the weakness and the snare of the devil. May God revere him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Recession hymn is hymn number 635. Six three five in the Ivy Hymn.